Right, good morning, Year 8. So what we're going to do today is we are going to be focusing on a very particular element in the periodic table, which is so, so important for, well, life and our modern way of, uh, our modern society, really, uh, which is carbon. But before we do that, uh, I'm just going to see if you can apply what you learned yesterday. So what I would like you to do is pause the video and see if you can draw covalent bonds for the following so they get gradually harder so the first one is h2 so hydrogen this one ca so it's calcium oh2 note the oh are in the brackets so think what that might mean that one is quite hard as well actually and then h2 so4 that's sulfuric acid okay so pause the video and give them a quick go you might need to check uh, the periodic table just to see how many electrons are in the outer shell okay so do that now please okay so the big reveal hydrogen h2 as a dot cross diagram would look like that and the hydrogen had one electron in its outer shell so in order for it to be stable it needs two so it would share like that h2 okay next one calcium hydroxide that's what this is that's the calcium and that's the hydroxide part hydrogen and oxygen this would look like this just get rid of that so calcium has uh, two electrons in its outer shell because it's in group two so let's just say they're the dots there they are one two oxygen we know has six one two three four five six and there's the other oxygen and so and then hydrogen has one uh, one and so it can form one covalent bond with the hydrogen there and one covalent bond with the calcium so that is the hydroxide OH and of course there are two of them there's one and there's the other one and if we count the electrons uh, one two three four now, that might not seem right, but I'll get to that a bit later. Oxygen, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then the hydrogen, 1, 2, 1, 2. Right, apologies. I just realised, actually, sorry, those should have, I should have quickly drawn those in over here because remember, a pair is a double bond. Sorry, these should be double bonds. So 1, 2, 3. Four, so that makes calcium one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight electrons in its outer shell. Apologies for that. So that'd be a double bond. H2SO4, last one, would look like this. So you've got sulfur and you've got oxygen and hydrogen. Yeah, just spotting a possible error there. Bear with me a moment. I know. Right, so that is correct. There is just one thing I did uh, forget to mention. Some electrons, uh, sorry, some atoms can have more than eight electrons in their outer shell. Uh, a few can have actually 18, um, which is what sulfur can have. It's got 12 here, but it can have up to 18. So that's why this was harder, because you would have had to have researched that. So apologies, that one's probably a little bit unfair. So I'm actually going to say, don't worry if you didn't get that one. Uh, that was very, very difficult indeed. OK, anyway, we're not going to worry too much about that today. Uh, we're going to look at carbon. So today, all of you should be able to identify the forms of carbon. Most of you are able to describe the properties of the different forms of carbon and suggest why they occur. And a few of you will be able to explain in detail the properties of carbon and explain why it's so essential for life. Right. The first thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to just jot down everything you know or think you know about carbon already. OK, so you've heard what have you heard? It might just be two or three things. It might uh, you might already know quite a lot about this particular element. OK, so off you go. OK, so here are a few things about carbon. Some of them you hopefully could just work out from last lesson, but things like it's in group four of the periodic table. Uh, it can make four covalent bonds. It's got um, 
four electrons in its outer shell. Um, it's the main element in fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas. Uh, it has an atomic number of six. It's a non-metal. It's found in all known life. It has an atomic mass of 12, usually, and it has different isotopes. Now, isotopes are elements that have the same atomic number, but a different atomic mass. So, for example, in this case, you can have carbon-12, which is the most common version, but you can also have carbon that has an extra neutron, carbon-13, okay? Anyway, quick sum rundown of carbon. Um, there it is. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, and you can't really see it there. Um, six neutrons and six protons in the nucleus. Unfortunately, a couple are hidden there. Um, and then you've got six electrons one, two, three, four, five, six electrons going around the edge. So it's got four electrons in its outer shell, which means you can make four bonds. Now that means you can make long strings of um, chemicals, you know, and that gives carbon a huge range of properties. We're going to talk through some of those now. So how do we get this? Because we can't get it by ionic bonding. So carbon always forms covalent bonds. OK, so if I just actually just draw in my electrons, just do them in green today, we've got one, two, and we've got one, two, three, four. Now, I'm not going to draw this because actually um, you already have this from last lesson because methane, CH4, is one of the ones we've already done. So have a quick check back and see how did we make this? It was all by covalent bonding. But carbon can covalently bond in other ways. Now, there are three forms of carbon that you need to know about, okay? You should be familiar with all of them. The first is soot, okay, or coal, just pure carbon, okay? That's what that is. Then there's graphite. Now, graphite, uh, you will be familiar with because it's the pencil lead. In fact, your pencil is not made of lead at all. It's made from this stuff, graphite. And we'll talk about the properties of this in a moment. And then the last one is diamond. Now, diamond, it's very difficult to get carbon to the conditions where it makes diamond. And so that's why diamonds tend to be so expensive. So. In assignment, there is um, a link to a YouTube clip. You just need to watch the first couple of minutes of that. It'll illustrate uh, some of the different forms of carbon. So do that now, please. So this shows the structure in the ways in which carbon is created. So firstly, this is just loose carbon. These are just random carbon atoms just sort of floating around. This form of carbon, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger so you can see it, graphite. Okay, now graphite can do some really strange things. Now, if you look very closely, okay, you can see that it's, carbon has arranged itself into these layers. Okay, now that's really important because what that means is when you use graphite as pencil lead, if you essentially slide your pencil lead across table, these layers slip off, leaving a mark of graphite. That's how pencils actually write. Okay. The other thing the sharp-eyed people might have noticed is, look, one, two, three. The carbon is only forming three bonds, and yet we know carbon can form four. The way it for what's happened to that fourth electron to make that other bond is that it's basically a free electron. It's being used to hold these layers together, and it kind of just floats around between these layers. Now, a free electron is really, really important because a free electron can, it's very similar to what you find in metals. So what property do you think that gives graphite? Okay, if it's a bit like a metal, what could it do? 
for that. Well, zipping forward, essentially, graphite can conduct electricity. And the experiment we were going to do was we were simply going to put graphite, soot, and I was actually going to borrow a diamond from someone. And we can see that graphite can conduct electricity through a circuit, but diamond and soot can't. Okay. Because if you look here, we've got diamond. So take, for example, that carbon. Let's uh, make that a bit bigger for a second. Let's just say there's our carbon atom just there. One, two, three, four. All of its electrons are being used to hold this diamond structure together. Okay, so we uh, there's no free electron available to conduct electricity. But in graphite, there is. Okay, so that's one of the key differences between the two. However, look at the way the diamond is arranged. Every carbon atom is strongly linked to the next carbon atom. Now that gives diamond some amazing properties. It makes it really, really, really strong. In fact, diamond is the hardest known substance that uh, we know about. Okay, that's why, for example, in industrial drills, they have what we call diamond bit drills. They can literally drill into anything. As you imagine, they're might expensive and they're not of the quality of jewellery drills, but they're still diamond and they are still very, very, very hard indeed. OK, so a few other things that we need to know. OK, so um, I'm going to ask you to pause the video and make a very quick copy of this. It doesn't need to be completely exact, but these are the elements that make up your body. So if we took your total body weight, 65% of you is oxygen, 18.5% um, of you is carbon. Now, I should point out that most of the oxygen and in your body is in fact tied up in the water. Now, oxygen is much heavier than hydrogen, so H2O. So most of you is water. But look at the other element, carbon. Okay. Carbon makes up a significant proportion of your body. Okay, so carbon is essential for making molecules in our body. Okay, and these are some of the other elements we find phosphorus, potassium. I mean, we die without any of them, but obviously not as critical as carbon. So let's have a look. So, um, an amino acid, um, these are used to make proteins. Okay. Look at that. Right at the centre, there's some carbon atoms holding it together. And this thing called the R group, that's pretty much all carbon. Obviously, there's your oxygen and your hydrogens there as well, and there's a nitrogen in there. Okay, But all your proteins, okay, so all your muscle, all your enzymes, all your collagen for your hair and your bones and your nails, all of those contain carbon because they're all made of amino acids which build up into proteins. Um, the very structure of who you are, your DNA, okay? So DNA is the structure that codes and tells us how to grow. Where are the carbons? Right, so they're here. The structure is a phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar. And you get repeating chains like that. One, two, three, four. So the very structure of who you are is actually held together by a combination of carbon and a few other things, phosphorus, oxygen, hydrogen, but basically carbon. And the bases, the actual part that form the code, they're mostly carbon too. And then, of course, glucose. Glucose is our primary source of fuel, and fats are also made up of carbon. But look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six carbons contained in glucose. Okay. And in fact, the formula for glucose, which you should have come across in respiration in biology, is C6H12O6. Okay, so carbon, vitally, vitally important. Right, a few other things. Um, some of the fuels that we drill for, produce and then burn. Okay, so all of these are derived from oil. Okay, and all of these, as you can see, have carbon as their main um, constituent. 
And as you can see, carbon always makes four bonds. One, two, three, four. That's methane. That's the stuff that comes out of gas taps or your cookers at home. And you've got this one, carbon. Look, one, two, three, four. So we've made four bonds, but one of them is joined to another carbon. And so what you can get is these chains of carbon like this. Okay. And then how is the carbon technology actually forming? So look at the kind of things we can make from carbon. Um, bulletproof vests, plastic bottles, oil is mostly carbon. Um, we can make things like carbon fiber. So racing cars need a very, very light material. Steel is strong, but carbon fiber is strong and light. So because it's light, it's much better for using things like this. Um, that's true of the new generation of aeroplanes that might be coming out. Um, things like the new generation of spacecraft, uh, plastic bags, sportswear, all of these contain carbon and also nanotechnology. Okay. So your task is this. Um, it, with all the information you've learned today, I want you to do a summary of carbon. It is quite possibly the most important element to your daily lives. So working in pairs, obviously you won't do that. I want you to take a whole page in your book, and when I say that I mean a double page, and do an information page on carbon. So the different forms that it can take, its chemical structure, uses as a fuel, and its use in living things. So explain how it forms bonds, why it's so important in all walks of life and any potential development. So how might people start using carbon to create new technologies? OK, so in assignments, I've uploaded a fact sheet so you can read through that and pick out the bits you want. But you must reword it into your own words. You're not to sort of just take off the fact sheet and plug it in. That's not what I want. I want you to use your, uh, your own words. So read it. And apply it to your own. Um, also, use the internet. Okay, uh, you obviously got the internet at home. Find out a little bit more about carbon and add to it. Um, add some diagrams, um, and you can even add drawings of things that carbon is used for. Just one other thing. Uh, there was a link here to a YouTube clip. I will also add that into assignments to help you. So I'll be online as always. Good luck. Good luck.